What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Collinsville Regionals is coming up this weekend, so I have three guests here to discuss the OCIC meta and the implications it will have on the St. Louis slash Collinsville Regionals meta. Um, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, Alec, Peter, then Ross. What's up, audience? My name is Alec Gessler. Uh, just day two, Dallas Regionals, taking 26 or something like that. My list was terrible, but it's fine. Uh, and yeah, I love the standard format. Not really. Hey, uh, my name is Peter. I'm from New York. And uh, as of 10 a.m. this morning, I'm going to St. Louis this weekend. You're wild, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name's Russ. I made top eight at Dallas. And uh, I talk a lot of trash. And I told everyone if I ever take this tournament, uh, this game seriously, which I usually don't, then I automatically make top 16. I'm five for five whenever I say that beforehand on video and talk trash to everyone I know. I did it again in Dallas. Uh, and um, this format's pretty good. Team up saved it. Try hard rust. Try, Try hard rust. Top twenty nineteen, dude. All right. Uh, so to start this off, I want to give the viewers kind of an insight into how you guys are looking at this tournament. So first, I want to establish the decks that you are expecting to play against at St. Louis. Um, or do you guys call it St. Louis or Collinsville? I don't know which one works. St. Louis. St. Louis. St. Louis. Okay. Collinsville is too many. It's too many syllables. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> Russ, we'll start with you. Um, establish the decks that you're expecting to play against at St. Louis. Day one. Um, two to three copy paste Zapdos lists, uh, from the uh, top. Uh, so two two to three usually on the two side. People think they're gonna play a lot of that meta, but like it's really, uh, kind of sparing, especially after a big event already established it. At least two Picaram decks because people think, oh, it's so fun. I'm just going to grab energy out of my deck kind of thing. Um, maybe one Mali, regular Psychic, maybe one Ultra Mali. And then I always give three rounds to whatever trash garbage people bring because they don't actually like pay attention. Um, or they're like, I just want to have fun and do whatever I want. And um, you have to account for those when you're like thinking of playing a rogue deck. So when people are like, oh, this beats like all the top tier in the meta, we're like, congratulations, if you, if you can beat all the top tier, but you can't beat the stupid stuff and get through like round four without being two and two, then like you're not going to enjoy like the run you're going to have. Yeah, so. that, is, that is so important. I can't remember the last regional I had where I didn't come up against like a Duskmane Necrozma or like just some random stuff like that or Vika Volt, but their partner isn't Rayquaza, just <laughs> some stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah. Just like yeah. Sylveon Charizard and Stack Attack. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. yeah. Get yes. body, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Peter. Uh, which decks are you expecting um, to play against? More or less what Russell said. I'm um, expecting people to play that Zapdos list with like maybe one or two changes. The DDG um, list. Yeah, I, like, I can see people changing like up to three cards. It was a pretty decent list. I mean, you can't really take that sort of like archetype that far. It's just like copy paste mostly. But um, I don't think you play that many. Like, I think the top will be like two. There'll obviously be some outliers who play like five of them because that always happens. Mm -hmm. But this event, if you look at the attendance numbers as of this morning, they're like 900 plus. Um, I don't know. This is this is probably like lining up to the largest regionals of the year. So. I think you're going to play, like, a lot of everything, honestly. Like, probably, usually when I go to regionals and they're, like, 800-plus players, I play, like, nine different decks. So I don't really think you're going to play more than two of any specific deck at this tournament, especially day one. Yeah. But the, the, yeah. the top decks are obviously going to be, like, Zapdos, uh, Zekrom, and, like, some kind of Malamar variant, whether it's Ultra, Spread, or, like, just Psychic. Cool. Alec, uh, anything different than what they said? Um, probably a Zoroark or two, maybe, just because it has Muck in it, and people want to counter Zapdos, and Muck is actually really hard for the deck to like play around. So maybe that, but otherwise I agree with what they said. At, yeah, at, at least one of those, especially if you're doing well. Um, mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of like Tier 2 players that... <laughs> they they just go. I don't feel like paying for new cards, and so I'm just gonna play Zoroark. And... <laughs> That's another yeah, reason why I don't think a lot of people will play Zapdos because that like Jorachis are just like 25 now for some reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I don't think I've ever seen a Hollow Rare reach these prices. Not since the old days. Like, ordered 24 of them at, at three dollars each. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Value, dude. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so we'll start with Alec for the next one. Uh, same thing, kind of getting an insight into you as a player. Um, what decks have you been testing for this event? Okay. Going back to maybe. even before OC. Um, so maybe past two weeks, what have you been testing? 
uh, literally everything, but to like narrow it down more, uh, Pika Rom, I guess mainly the tier one decks, just because I don't feel like coming up with anything rogue, and I don't want to buy cards that are expensive. So Pika Rom, uh, Malamar stuff before OCIC, uh, Pika Rom, Zapdos, Zoark stuff, uh, Lost March here and there, but I don't know if Alternate Cross is going to be that big. It might still be, but I don't think it's that good anymore. So I might play Lost March. I don't know. I'm still testing it. Uh, otherwise, I just don't want to lose to like some childish crap. Like don't, I don't want to lose play to Lost a... March. Yeah, like I don't want to lose to a Marshadow or a Muck, so I'm not gonna play a deck that just loses to it. Uh, Peter, what was the question? Sorry. Uh, what have you been testing last week or two? Um, so primarily I've been testing Zekrom uh, tag team. Uh, I've obviously played a little bit of the Zapdos deck uh, this past weekend. Um, primarily versus, like, the Zoroark and, like, Malamar matchups, just to get a feel of how, like, lopsided the Malamar matchup can be and how tough dealing with Muck can be. And, I mean, it pretty much assured what I, like, originally suspected of the deck, that it just uh, relies heavily on, like, killing small stuff. And if you get Muck out, it just, like, stops doing anything. So... Um, personally, I don't see myself playing the Zapdos deck, but I think a lot of people are just gonna, like, like Russ said before, like, it won, so people are gonna play it. Yeah. Alright, and lastly, Rush, uh, Russ, <laughs> uh, <laughs> establish, Rush. establish Rush. the Rush. decks you have been testing in the past um, week oh, or I, two. Oh, I, uh, OCIC was not a surprise whatsoever. Yeah. I, we talked about it on the Someone's PCE podcast, and literally everything we said was gonna be good did good. Um, Malamar did well. It just didn't make it into day two. I don't think any big name players were piloting on um, Malamar. Uh, my bad to the Americans that were doing really well with it day one. <laughs> uh, day, day two, y'all got spanked. <laughs> so like Zapdos just did its thing. It was not surprising to see Zapdos that strong. Um, Zapdos now has more counters than he usually did. I personally didn't like the DDG list all that much. It was a little inconsistent. Um, not having Volkner was a very weird touch. I tested it with three, four Volkner every time I was testing pre OCIC. Um, this last league challenge, I played um, copy paste Isaiah Williams list or the DDG list, uh, and by copy paste I mean I didn't have a Coco Prism or a Tapu Coco GX on my list, so I threw in a Marshadow and a Judge. The Marshadow I GX. <laughs> I forgot Marshadow GX. Uh, I, I forgot Thunder's Assault doesn't hit for weakness, so I just discarded Marshadow GX every time I saw it, um, which is really really <laughs> funny. I also instructed into like I had like a double Guzma hand. I used Instruct and I drew Marshadow GX, and I was like, well, this is what I get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still 4 0 It was fun, but like um, I I I'm okay with that list. I don't think too many people are gonna get too cute. I think um more players are gonna play the Zoroark. More tier two players are gonna play the Zoroark variant, if anything, because they feel like it's comfortable and allows you to outplay opponents. Um, uh, I have a hard read that there's gonna be um a revival of Mill. Probably around like 30 to 40 people who are gonna bring it. Um, so I always factor that into like my own testing, um, in my own like deck, uh, my own tech in my list. Um, I think it was literally St. Louis last year where I made top eight, right? When I had Orangu, Zoro Pod, and I, I, mm -hmm. I was showing off with Orangu, and no one, no one respected it until Tor played it. Yeah, we. Like, we yeah, I'm pretty sure Tor. we actually talked about it on my meta discussion leading up to St. Louis last year. You were like, "I'm yeah. not losing the childish stuff," and then you went and didn't lose the childish stuff. Yeah, yeah. So like, uh, I'm I'm probably gonna end up bringing the same logic here um, with that uh, because of Plume, and um, I don't know if you want to talk about that now because we're talking about. Like, we'll get into we're... it. We'll get into okay. it. Okay. Um, regardless, like like nothing's gonna change. The top players, I believe, um, I still have to like take two or three more days to call what DDG is gonna play. I've done that for every tournament all year, like to a T. And I think we talked about this. Remember when they? I said they're playing Guardi at uh yeah. at Ronald, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to Galio. They better not see me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, they they better dodge me all day, which they did. Yep. And so I lost. <laughs> like um. <laughs> Now, I, I think I'm gonna, another hard read is going to be that Zoro Control is going to come back. Um, and so is a couple of other mill stuff. And if you just throw in a Rangaroo and you have like a switch in energy, you should be able to come back, uh, like come back from all that. The Zoro Rock list, um, people are going to test Absol. People are going to make the bad decision to play Absol in their list um, over like some other kind of tech cards. People are going to um, test Wobbuffet and um, another copy of Absol on their own Jolteon, uh, their own Zapdos list. I personally believe that the Zapdos list should be um, changing their uh, copies around and playing less escape board and more switch cards. Um, and then if, if you have room for that, then you can also have room for a pal pad because you can just Jirachi into your Guzma and then have like Guzma outs. Um, and then good players that are playing Zapdos should come out and still make it into day two because bad players for some reason love having a Jirachi on their bench 
in the Zapdos mirror. Like, it's, like, free candy to, like, give out to everybody. Because <laughs> um, they're, they're like, well, like, if you're just going to go somewhere, you knock out a Zapdos. And I was like, no, they need Electro Power. Like, you tell me they just have that every turn? They always have, like, Electro Power Guzma? And, like, do you not regulate their Rodrachi? There's a whole bunch of little things, so. Okay, so let's bring it back in. Um, a few <laughs> a few things that you've been playing, trying to get familiar mm-hmm. with practicing, seeing if it's a good choice. Um, It's the same stuff. Now I just test tech. Like okay. I, already knew, I knew Zapdos was busted going. So into you the were so you're testing Zapdos, Pika Rom, Zorark variant, seeing what mm-hmm. you can tech the best. My list always had a two one Jolteon. Right. And the only people that did that was was like Clifton and a few other people from um Singapore. Yeah, Clifton and, and Kaiwen yeah. played Jolteon in their Pika Rom list. Actually, they played Pika Rom, Zapdos, and Jolteon all in one deck. Yeah, yeah, which was nuts. I th- I think that's actually pretty good. But I'm trying to explore Jolteon more in the um, Zapdos mirror because I think it's it's solidly like swings it if played correctly. Yeah, I have some thoughts and on well, that too. And, and well timed it too. We'll get into that. Um, but what you you said something about uh, the Zapdos decks that um, I was going to see if any of you said it before I said it. Um, you were testing them with Volkners in it, and mm-hmm. DDG. I was the whole time I was watching the streams. I was just assuming there was Volkners in their deck until I realized. Wait, I've watched two or three of these on stream now and haven't seen a single Volkner. Um, that makes them a lot weaker to Alolan Muck. If they can't get their items with Jirachi, you can always get them as a backup with Volkner. But with no Alolan Muck, you can't do that. With Alolan Muck on the board, you can't do that. Yep. Um. Okay. So. Now we're going to move into actually trying to call the meta. Uh, do you think Collinsville's day one meta will be reflective of Oceania's day two results? Um, Peter, we'll start with you. So will the day one of Collinsville look like the day two of Oceania? Um, definitely not. I don't think we saw that many diverse decks in day two of Oceania. We saw like maybe six different decks or seven. Mm-hmm. There's definitely going to be more than that. Right. Um, uh, I just expect there to be a bunch of new decks to come out. Like Russ said, uh, there's people that I've been hearing about this Vileplume stuff too. And people like are trying to get cute with that and try to mill people. And I mean, the meta is like developing in such a way where uh, the decks that accelerate energy are kind of getting pushed out. So like those are the decks that usually beat mill yep. and the other decks just lose to mill. So I feel like that's why people might like try to uh, bring back mill. But I personally don't ever consider mill when i'm choosing my deck because it's childish Mm -hmm. all right i think peter uh summed it up pretty well there so i'm going to just move on to the next one unless anyone uh has a rebuttal uh no i think i'm gonna tech against mill because even though it's childish for some reason i play against it every single tournament and i feel like (laughs) having a free win for a round I also think there's like a lot of like tier two players that if they're if they just go oh I can just pick up X Y deck like they just lose to me Guzma or Angaruing since turn one. Um, I will say like at St Louis I decked out at least six rounds against my opponent. Um, and then this mill stuff I I just don't feel like losing to them. I'd rather just take a loss like somewhere else. But um, yeah, all all I need to do is play an Oranguru and I'm good. We're already playing switch cards in the deck, so it's not like you can. Get I feel like I'm always playing a deck that. I can't really tech for mill with just one or two cards. So. And then you go against Charizard mill. And Sylveon mill. What, 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 what <laughs> could Simeon I have done loses with, anyway. What, what could I have done with Simeon to, to do that? What you could I have lose. done in Grand Take Ball the to do You made the like, mistake lose. of playing for Simeon. That was the problem. Oh, dude. Um, okay, next. Um, which is your preferred way to build Picaram? Um And the second part to this is what which variant do you think we'll see the most play? So let's start out with your preferred way way to build Pico Rom. Uh Russell. Um with the Jolteon is my preferred way. The one that the like the one that Rahul and all of them did uh, played well with. Okay, they didn't have Jolteon well. though. They had two Zapdos. Yeah, yeah. That's the one I'll see more of. Okay. And the one I like is Jolteon. Okay. Um I also don't want to play the deck. So that's a thing too. Okay. Uh Alec. Same thing. Uh, the I like the Jolteon more, but I'll probably see more of Rahul's version and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Are you going to see versions that aren't like either? Do you think people are just going to bring their homebrews that are I that are likely less optimal? Yeah, the people that go X and four. Yeah. Yeah. We'll okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's going to be somebody that plays like Zerkatry and B strings and stuff like that, and they're just going to energy switch or something <laughs> like that. <So. laughs> Okay, so we'll if you're that, that person, uh, rethink, start rethinking your Zerkatry in the deck. Uh, Peter, which uh, Pika Rom do you, build do you prefer, and which do you think we'll see the most play? 
Well, I'm kind of biased because I obviously I'm going to prefer my builds mm -hmm. with the like super all in, uh, like get a bunch of energies turn one and punch you in the face and see if you can respond. So we're um, looking at something like so Jose's like, build, but different. Something very similar to Jose's. I mean, we both play the Rayquaza for extra energy excel and heavy energy switch. I think I play five, he played six energy switches. So something like that. Um, I feel like the deck is the best when it like just aggros you out. Because I don't like tying, especially in regionals. So I'm trying to finish these games. My dudes give up three prizes. You kill two of them, you won. But I, I feel like if I just put, apply a lot of pressure, like the decks in standard aren't as consistent as they can be most of the time. So I feel like a lot of decks just like crumble when you just punch them in the face, turn one, accelerate. You have two big dudes. I mean, I incorporate stuff like Acerola. So like you can stall a little bit just so that you can try to win the prize trade. Um, sometimes you can attack with like Zorora to give up an, an odd number of prizes so that you can have three attackers in the matchups. Um, I try to incorporate weakness policy too, cause I don't think you need choice band at all. Um, a lot of people are going to try to bring fighting counters and the format has like exterminated field blower from the format for some reason. Like no one plays field blower. Yo, Prism you're stadiums, bro. Yeah, you're like too that, scared. That, that was literally the answer. Like, you can't just have Labyrinth just... Yeah, you just have to game. play counter stadiums, and no one has enough slots to play multiple copies of Field Lower and multiple copies of stadiums. Yep. Because a lot of decks are just playing multiple copies of stadiums, like the Prism stadiums. Like, I really like Wonder Labyrinth and Zekrom, just because you accelerate so much energy, you're applying so much pressure, and you're dropping a stadium that they can't counter without another stadium, and they need more energy to attack, and usually they just can't get there. Okay, so um, I also want to note that it's okay that you're biased towards this build because obviously you wouldn't be going with this build if it wasn't winning you games, right? So, like, you right. like it for a reason. Um, right. And which one do you think people will play the most? I, I feel like people will play the most, um, the one with the double Zapdos, the one that okay. Rahul and, like, uh, Pedro and all of them played. Got it. Uh, uh, to piggyback on to piggyback on Peters, um, the Acerola concept is phenomenal. Um, I like Max Potion in mine instead. I just I wouldn't touch the deck in my list without playing heal. I think like like a single turn of a a heal like when they're trying to map out their six prizes is just so devastating. Um, there's also a lot of times when like they go for like an early poke and they goes up like a zero aura, and then like poke it for like one ten with the Zapdos, and you're kind of just like lightning energy retreat energy switch it off, and then like you go Acerola or Max Potion onto it. And you're kind of like, you just regulated, you negged their whole turn the turn before. Um, and you just have to really regulate shrine ticks and like other stupid stuff coming down. So I, I just wouldn't play the deck without heal. Um, but that's there's an aggressive version. There's like other versions of it. But I really like that one. Yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't play without max potion or weakness policy. Um, I prefer Acerola and Expanded since you have a few versus Seekers to help you out with that. But the max potions are pretty nice and standard as well as the weakness policies. Go ahead, Peter. Sorry. Yeah, if I could add one more thing. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, I think a lot of people have a misconception that the deck is, like, way too all-in. It's kind of all-in on turn one. You usually can get away with getting it on turn two as well, just because your attackers are so large. Um, a lot of the time, you go three energy on your active, accelerate three to the bench, and people think that you can't GX plus them the next turn, when, oh, yeah. in fact, your deck plays so many energy switches. All you need is an energy, energy switch, and a stadium and you just pop them for five prizes or something. I've done that a lot online, especially in the mirror match. Yeah, absolutely. And the three and three is very safe, especially when you're playing a healing option like myself and Russ were talking about. If they hit Pikachu, Zekrom, and Active for almost a KO, which they probably had a reach for if they're playing Electra Powers or Choice Bank Kakui, something like that, you used to roll a max pot before, after switching, of course, if it's max pot. And then uh, you have a brand new Pika Rom, and they put all those resources into nothing. Um, so I think it's pretty across the board that we think uh, Rahul and Pedro's list with the double Zapdos is probably the popular build at the time of recording. Yeah, yeah I feel like those people, like, people feel like that deck has a lot of versatility just because it plays a lot of the Lightning stuff. It plays, like, the Zapdos engine. It plays, like, the Picaram engine. It just plays a lot of the stuff, and I feel like people will gravitate more towards that. The only question I have... Uh, as far as that deck being the most popular, is that it plays four Jirachi. So I don't know if people can actually like get four Jirachis because just just because that's like a hundred dollars in itself. Yeah, uh, I think the people that already had the Jirachis will just net deck it, and the people that don't have the Jirachis will find that as an excuse to move to one of the other versions. Yeah. Um, also, the Zeroras are like twenty five dollars or something. 
Yeah, is there already? Yeah, I don't get that. That's yeah. weird. It's Lost Thunder went out of print, that's why. Um, no. well, where Quads is like only 10 bucks, though. That's weird, though. Yeah. No, like, play no one had a place that was just sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Next, uh, the same questions for Zapdos. Um, Russell, what is your preferred version of a Zapdos centric deck? Um, so, not the peek around builds. And which version of Zapdos will see the most play? Uh, my preferred version is the Shrine Buzzwall. Um, if not, no Shrine plus Buzzwall plus like other hot tech in it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that all we're going to see mostly is just copy paste of uh, the DDG list because yeah. both main top eight. Mm -hmm. um, but I just like I like having Buzzwall there. I think it's a phenomenal answer. You can set up like a bad opponent into a Guzma um, Sledgehammer and Muck and just kind of laugh at them as you like kick them in the face the rest of the game. Yeah. Uh, the version that the Schultz played with the beast energy like if you actually set yourself up and like and like run through your cards in order to get the beast energy plus a guzma turn um their deck staring down a sledgehammer turn like activated beast energy is like super scary mm -hmm. where they're like forced to go into a guzma turn um and then you can like make shrine guzma or shrine kakui and like weird numbers plus ban to um to sledgehammer their uh their active zora or gx when they have to go play into it um i don't know i, I just think that's the best one and then everyone's just going to copy and paste TDG. They might add, like, one or two cards. Um, I personally wouldn't do it. I, I don't like having that many skateboard. Not having Volkner was super weird. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of times I was hunting down energy, and, like, I, I would, like, Stellar Wish and then get to my um, energy lotto, and I'd be like, oh, thank you, Lord. And then, like, energy lotto and, like, got my lightning energy. <laughs> when yeah. if it was just the Volkner, I'd literally be making the same play that turn. I just Plus an Electro Power. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, all right, this would be phenomenal. But, you know, there's a lot of, oh, there's a lot of times I miss Stretcher. I was like, can I just get a Zapdos? It's so stupid. And I like the top five and like miss Nest Ball and miss anything. So. Uh, Alec, uh, your preferred Zapdos variant and the public's preferred Zapdos variant. Uh, Pre Oceania, it definitely was uh, Jolteon. Mm -hmm. Like my favorite. Uh, that deck was just, it pretty much beat, it beat Malamar and uh, Lost March. It just put on so much pressure. Because I know you posted your list, and when you put down Poe Town and you put 30 on the one hop-up, and you kill the one hop, like you, they only have two hop-ups, and you put 30 on the one hop-up, and they can't fund the F Stadium, and they can't evolve a hop-up for the rest of the game, it's freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the most popular one, though, is definitely going to be DDGs. Uh, one, of, one of Internet's people are just going to copy Pasta. Yeah. Uh, Peter, same question. Uh, I personally don't have a favorite build of the deck. I don't think the deck is that great, personally. I feel like it took advantage of, like, this perfect scenario in Oceania. Like, people weren't prepared for it. I don't think anyone expected it to do as well as it did. I'm actually surprised that it won the event. I feel like if Stefan had made, like, a few different card choices Primer. in his list, he would have uh, easily, like, just won that matchup with, like, the Muck and, like, like, like a little Grimer or something mm -hmm. if he played one copy. Um, but definitely the DDG, like, like some kind of version of that ddg list would probably be the best if i were to like build my version of the deck honestly i would probably play like some kind of jolteon stuff in it just because i think jolteon's pretty good yeah jolteon is underrated i think um okay last one same question for zora rock um do you want to go all in with tex with weavile unit energy that kind of stuff do you play a some kind of thin line of Lucario. Obviously, we're playing a low and muck. Um, so, what's your preferred Zorark, Zoro Rock variant, and which one do you think the people will play? Uh, Alec. Um, the people will probably play Stefan's list just because he rounded out his matchups a lot more, but they're going to throw in Grammar. You need Grammar, uh, as well as Ditto. Uh, what do I think is the favorite? Ooh. Um, from Stefan's list, I'd go to one one Cario, for sure. You don't need it. Plus, and probably play an extra blower, like two blowers, insane in this format. Maybe you can add like an. I don't even remember how many stadiums did he play. Did he play like two Devour Field. Uh, he what? played a Viridian and a no Wonder Devour Labyrinth. <laughs> yeah. No Devour Field. Viridian and Wonder Labyrinth. Oh, okay, so then. Maybe just another counter stadium or something, like a field blower and a counter stadium. Yeah, I, I've also just added Mount Lanakila to mine, but I think I'm dropping that for a Faba. Maybe you, Bill. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> You're not going. So. No. <laughs> who, who hurt you that you need fava? Dude? Yeah, well, how yeah. Fava for because <laughs> um field blower you can't reuse. The deck is already naturally playing pal pad, so you can fava away a um a weakness policy, and it's also lele searchable. And so if they're playing multiple weakness policy, you need multiple throughout the game. You can just pal pad it back and have it as an option. I went to a pass against you, bro. Chill. <laughs> you don't need fava. Um, Peter, same question for Zora Rock. Do you have a preferred version, and what do you think people will play? Um, I don't think that one one Lucario is very good. Uh, I like the idea of Lucario, but if you le read the Lucario Jax text, it says if you evolved from Ryolu the previous this turn, so it doesn't activate from Ditto Prism. So you actually need multiple Ryolus, in my opinion, because if you're playing like any deck that's weak to that, they'll just chase your one Ryolu. So I feel like it's pretty useless at one. Um, I feel like if you swap the counts and play like Zorak Lucario with a Lycanroc, like a 1-1 one -one Lycanroc, that's way more effective than the other way around. Yeah, uh, as for the most cool. popular build, I mean, most of the people, um, they're not going to shy away from like Zorak Lycanroc. Like we won't see like Zorak Elisipod or something like that. So I feel like uh, some kind of Zorak Lycanroc is definitely going to be the most popular. Um, I personally always try to incorporate Weavile just because it's such a good one prize attacker. Um, but it'd be like, besides that, I don't really see people like differentiating their list that much. Cool. Russell, uh, anything different? Mm, people play Grimer, people add Absol, more counter stadiums. Um, how many is Roll did it play? Uh, we can look at that. I think it was only oh, one. I think it was only one. That's oh, trash. I, I like two. Yeah, two. Yeah, I really like to, because I, I feel like I need to hit it, just because I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared, <laughs> scared it's going to die. They'll, they'll kill me, man. They'll kill me, bro. Um, That's about it. There's not much to do with that list. I, I personally like the Nanu version with Weavile. I told my students to play that, because, you know, they're juniors. Just go stomp everybody. They're going to throw their abilities out there like No Tomorrow. They play two way so like Weavile. Oh. Place two Ace Rolla? Yeah. Alright, that's yeah. that's good, dude. Good list. <laughs> good list. Good list. Good good list. list. <laughs> yeah, killing it. Um I, I wouldn't drop down Lucario at all. If you're going with this concept, you go with Lucario. Benjamin Fam and I were talking about this before. Um OCIC, he's like Oh, I get he's like I gave um I gave Stefan my list. He's better he's better win the whole tournament. I was like, Word. <laughs> then he was in finals and I was like, I hate Ben, dude. And then he lost and I was like, Let's go. <laughs> get there, boy. <laughs> but okay. um Yeah, I wouldn't change anything. Cool, cool. Um, which deck or tech is undeservingly getting hyped for this tournament? So this is Aww. like for Hey Fonte, Verbank, YouTube videos, Twitters, posts. Uh, if anyone here uses Pokemon, Reddit, anywhere, what what deck and or techs are getting undeservingly hyped? Uh, we'll just do one of each for now, and if you have more to add at the end, we can. Uh, we'll go Peter first. I feel like Absol is getting a lot of hype. Uh, Dude, I let first, it off, bro. Absol's busted. It's, the <laughs> card is so bad. Good. Honestly, the card is so bad. Unbelievably bad. I can't believe that people play that card. It's so bad in Zorark that I can't believe that people actually waste their bench slot on Zorark. I hate fine, bench... That's I hate fine. benching Zorark. Lele. We'll it's bad in Zorark. Like, general, you allow that. In Zorark, it's I don't even general, think... general, do you think it's bad? I think it's generally bad. Like, I wouldn't play it in any deck just because every single no. deck... That plays like some kind of pivot, also plays switch cards. I can't even look at you right now, man. Look at Zapdos. It's Zapdos. good in Zapdos because I... you can't play alone muck in Zapdos. It's good against Zapdos because yeah, they can't against... retreat. <laughs> Dude, Zapdos plays like a million switch cards. It's the same thing. They play four board. It plays uh, four. No, no, no. It, it, it plays three board. The DDG play, played play three, three board, board, three escape rope, three switch, and four Dude, Guzma. Dude, they play nine. They play nine ways to get out of the active and four Guzma. Like, yeah. that's insane odds from a card that searches the top five for a train. I'm not teching versus that effect. I'd rather yeah. play a little The DDG much. list was... Well, the DDG list was built to counter the techs. The the Absol tech. They incorporated yeah. the three switch, three rope for it. I just, like, don't... I don't see any deck outside of, like, like Zapdos having any remote bench space for that card. Okay, so would you say it's anything. decent in Zapdos or just put something else in? I, I would just have something else, like... Would you, would you put in? Would you put in? What's better than Absol? Come Wobbuffet. on. Wobbuffet. Wobbuffet. Oh. <gasps> Well, the Fed is good. Both? All right, all right. I'm, I'm not going to waste the card spot that has to sit on my bench the whole game <laughs> for a card that could potentially win me this game for a Wobba Fed that might not even help the whole time. I mean, everyone plays Ditto and Prism Stars. Where was yeah, that? Guzma. They just put it to the active. Like, what's this? So, so they're, they're going to Guzma my Wobba Fed 
and not, the did you, did you, see what did you see what Clinton did to Gustavo? No, I saw it. Did dude, you see my still, status? Like that's like, <laughs> that's, like, like that's such a <laughs> niche like, scenario. It is. It is niche. I'll if give you Peter can fit that. both of them in Zapdos, you play both of them honestly. But oh, I, yeah, I, that's what I would do. Zapdos's main weakness is Alolan mm -hmm. Muck. If you can mm -hmm. Guzma the Grimer and have a Wobbuffet out for the Ditto, they literally get checkmated on turn one of the game. Agreed. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then they Guzma kill the Wob, and then you're like, oh. How are they gonna Guzma kill the Wob on turn two if they just got Guzma killed? Bro, playing Zorar, my hand's like twenty cards. Yeah. It's not twenty. Every Zorar player <laughs> has the entire deck in their no hand chance. at all times. No okay. Chance. You you hit you hit Dude. Guzma Nesball. As, as, you, uh, as a Zorar player, you're so scared of Zapdos that mm -hmm. you go turn one, I get only one Zerua and ditto with Grimer just because I need a turn two muck, and you're going to get 20 cards in your hand? That's not happening. I mean, right, Zorak so deck the, should right, be right, playing right, really right, right. now. Yeah, absolutely If you drew the nuts, if you drew the nuts, if I open a Rockruff, okay, we'll go with this. If I open a Rockruff, all I got was an Elm or whatever yeah. whatever they play nowadays. Uh, I don't remember. We're playing um, Lily and, now. And they, get, they, get Zor they get Zorua, ditto, and Grimer. Yeah, like, you have Wabafet. What are you doing? Are you going after the Ditto or the Grimer, or or are you getting Wabafet and then you're killing the Zorua? What are you doing? I'm not, I'm not killing the Zorua. I'm killing. You're the not killing the Zorua. No chance. Child. Yeah, no. I no scared, chance. Bro, you're you kill yeah, the scared. you kill the Grimer if you have the Wabafet. Literally auto loses to Muck. I'm definitely scared. Dude. I slapped that Zorua like a child. <laughs> no chance. Dude. They could have that plus plus two cards. They could have that. All right. Dude. So that. Peter's tech that's undeservingly getting hype is Absol. We've established that. Um, Alec, tech or deck or both that's undeservingly getting hype? Um, after OCIC went the way it did, I think Zapdos Jirachi is way too hype. Like, so I think a lot of people, from my testing, I think you should be. If you're playing a Zorak deck, you need to play a 1 Ditto, 1 Grimer, 1 Muck. Or 2 Muck, even. I don't even know what you want to play. Thick in your Muck line to beat your matchup. I don't care. <laughs> Beat that deck. It's fine. <laughs> uh, the tech that's getting overhyped. Oh god. Um. If you don't have one, that's fine. We can come back. It's, it's deck or tech. Come back. Yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. I think it's deck or tech. Okay. Because I think Zapdos Jirachi overall, it's good, but it's not that good. Okay. Uh, Russell. <laughs> um. Sammy and Coco. People need to stay away from that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. No. No. Tons of people hyping that stuff up, bro. No way, dude. Run. Run away from those ideas. Bro, Pacimi and Coco's gas. You know what? You know what makes Pacimi and Coco bad? Absol. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It does. Like, you're like, I'm just going to spread. And I'm like, what good <laughs> player is going to just <laughs> fill their bench? Full of Jirachi when I see a Coco I'll turn one. I'm just going to kill it with Electro Power. I've been telling Ooh, people my... that uh, Pissimi and Coco is, could be an easy route to day two, but once you get to day two, you're probably not winning any games. Yeah, you're going to get browned. Smacked up. Yeah. Doesn't it lose to Muck too? Um, yeah, it loses to Muck too. So oh, okay, it loses to Muck too. In testing, it's been close to even versus Zorark. <laughs> they only have a ditto. Because once if you can just Guzma kill the Muck, because you get like a flying flip off, right? And then well, versus Zorak, I think it's irrelevant if they have the mock or not. Why? Because you can just kill the the Zorarks without any abilities. You can, oh, okay. but your draw power is much limited because your Jirachis are turned off. Ooh. Are you playing Zipstrika in the deck? It depends. If you're going into a meta expecting Ditto Grimer and Muck, then you probably play one one Zipstrika. Or yeah. you don't play the deck. Or I you don't play, the, play deck. the deck. Okay. That'd be, that'd be the Coming from a player who played the deck at two regionals, I just wouldn't play the deck. Yep. If y'all want to walk into that trap, feel free. Those were dark times, and the format sucked. That's why I played it. I was trying to lose to Blacephalon. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> our overhyped techs are Absol, and our overhyped decks are Zapdos, Jirachi, DDG build, and Pissimi and Coco. Um, anything else that we missed? Text that should be spoken of? I think, personally, the Vile Plume from burning shadows is being overhyped um you're gonna play that card to you're gonna put oddish or a candy vile plume into your deck just to auto win zapdos and then lose to anything and, with evolved and pokemon Pikaram and malamar so, okay so you know well, the decks without bro, jolty on gx let's keep this going yeah. i don't know i mean are are you ever gonna get it down wow. is the question also if you have a bench which you're probably gonna have something else on your bench besides the vile plume peak of rom can just guzma something and tag bolt and kill the vile plume because it only works once in the active <laughs> yeah but if yeah. they get two yeah, mm-hmm my, my board is my board is two vile plumes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're swinging. <laughs> Sweet, dude. Okay, so uh, vile plume vile plume isn't overhyped. 
I have no, one I... more card actually that I think is kind of overhyped. It's a very <laughs> the thing is it's a very good card. Um, but I love it when my opponents play it. It's Viridian Forest. How's Every that time I that card's amazing. It is. Yeah, it's it's, it's amazing when my opponents play it, dude. I want that. You yeah, get a free search, and then you <laughs> then you replace it with your stadium, and then use your stadium. Yeah, it's just Discard so. Discard a psychic, get a metal. I'm like, I feel like that card didn't have energy. Your opponent way too much. Illusion. Uh, so oh. do you guys think Vile Plume deserves the hype then? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty good. I don't. I think it's bad. Well, listen, are you testing it in? I haven't tested it. I don't play childish right. decks. Well, there you go. I don't play it. I'm not gonna play either. <laughs> the same. I think it's good. I'm playing. Oh, <clears throat> There's one card that I think. Like, in Zoroark decks specifically, like, I know you love this card, P Kika. Well, I think Wonderlapping Zoroark decks is just really, like, it's so weird right now because you have to always have, like, two energy on it. Like, I guess, like... I wouldn't play it in Zoroark. Yeah, I don't think you should play it in Zoroark because the one Control that guy did, and I think the senior... If you're playing Control, like, yeah, you play you it. played yeah. in Control. Oh, yeah. Uh, Stefan played it in his Zoroark Rock. Oh, yeah, yeah. Didn't, yeah. I played so it maybe there. What it's... Doesn't it stick you for a turn though? No, no. you're fine. Just playing it. So versus Lost March, it wins you the matchup as long as you don't yes. like dead draw for seven turns. Um, and even if you are, so let's say you're behind on prizes and you put it down, you can use counter gain for a turn if you're still using counter gain. If not, you can swing with uh, DCE fighting on Zorark, and they never hit you because they're Lost March and they don't play stadiums. If they are playing like something bad like Sky Pillar. They are preparing for spread, and their deck's inconsistent, and you're going to beat them anyway. Or you can play Shrine. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Unless you're playing against the Lost March yeah, before no. Shrine, yeah. their deck won their labs to play. For sure. Um, okay, next question. Is this tournament, uh, St. Louis Regionals, better positioned for single prize attacker decks or GX-centric decks? Uh, we'll start with Russ. Mm, definitely not GX-centric decks. Okay. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of shrine, and then like sometimes you just lose because your hand sucks, and you have to go like double lele and stuff. And so, as like we saw in finals, I think, because Stefan's hand was just trash, and then he just got shrined out, and then uh, Isaiah went guzma guzma, and then time got called, and then Stefan was like, "Well, <laughs> okay, that'll man. do. That'll do, man. Here you go. Good game." So what I want to specify on that is just because GX decks you think are unfavored or not. Uh, not better position they're in a lesser position than single prize does that mean that shrine decks are better because if shrine decks are playing against other shrine decks then their shrines are doing nothing mm, i mean we can go around with this logic and theory all day it's just it, it comes down to like what matchups are you going to hit and what are you expecting if you disagree with what we all talked about in the beginning of like the meta then if you think personally you're going to play against four or five zapdos decks then don't play shrine um, so you can have some kind of edge against them. And if you think you're going to see a lot of GX decks, then, you know, do play a shrine. Um, but notice that everyone's list only had, like, two, right? Mm -hmm. I think like that's the way to go. Because they didn't, like, over-dedicate, but they still wanted that edge. And, like, when that thing sticks against a GX deck, boy, that thing sticks hard. Mm -hmm. Like, like when it stays on the board for two turns, I feel like my opponents would just scoop. Yeah, I mentioned... You, you, should, you shouldn't be, like, one band electro power away from every KO. Like, once you hit that, that it's game. Yeah, I mentioned this in a video from earlier... Uh, a few days ago, my favorite thing about the Zapdos DDG list was actually that they only played two band, two shrine. So they had four cards that helped them in GX matchups, but only four dead cards in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And as opposed to like three band, three shrine, or even going crazy with four shrine, that would be like almost what uh, one seven out of sixty cards would in dead in your deck against the mirror. Uh, Peter, uh, GX centric or single prize attackers better positioned? I feel like very specific GX centric decks are uh, better positioned just because if you play like large bodies with uh, the ability to heal and not get one hit KO'd, you can trade more efficiently. Uh, I personally am not a fan of playing single prize mirrors, especially at regionals, mm -hmm. because that tends to like lead to ties a lot, especially in day one where you're playing against bottom tier players uh, for the first few rounds. So if you start with ties, you'll end up in the tie bracket and like be more accustomed to playing versus slower players. So I'd rather just like avoid ties at all costs. You don't like the long game one? I hate those, no. I never you like go the long for game one, one where you come out victorious and then you're I don't go, like, I've I've never one owed bro. anyone before. <laughs> and I never will. <laughs> Alright, Alec. Uh same question. Single prize attacker decks or GX centric decks? 
I don't want to play Shrine Mirrors, so I would say GX Heavy, but I don't want to lose to a Shrine not playing a stadium. <laughs> so, I mean, both? So, yeah. what you're saying is you um, want a single prize attacking deck that also beats other single prize attacking decks. Yeah, pretty much. So, so you want Gramble. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to lose to Muck, though. No, you're what are you talking about? Pico, Pico, Pico Rom just shoots your gramble and you're backwards. The gramble <laughs> back there. And you, set up, you set up three grambles, dude. What are you talking about? Oh, dude, what do you God. mean? I literally what kind of hand you got? I got a double what do you five mean, dude? Me against Mike Newey and I just laid down Muck and I 6 0'd him. Oh, literally, he couldn't do God. anything. Just because I put down Muck. He, he wasn't playing play Pidgeotto or Zipstrika. It was pre team. Yeah. Can you imagine yeah. Pico Rom going like KO, KO your gramble? You have a third one, they hit and they ace roll it. And they pick it up. There you go. You lose. <laughs> All right, so um, we had a little mixture here. So Kika said GX decks that are bulky and can heal could be good. Uh, Russ, you said single prizes, right? Yes, because he, my man's mentioning heal, and people don't like playing that. Right. So I don't, I don't, I don't want to like thing. think centric towards like how the meta, as opposed to like my personal call, is gonna work. Personally, I think I'm just gonna end up playing a Zapdos deck without Shrine, and so because that's one prizers, like I like, yeah. enjoy, but I like. Mm -hmm. like these people playing GXs, like, if they don't, they already have their Shrine counters, and I'm gonna let them keep them. And I'm just gonna get there and, like, hit them where it hurts. Have other cards in your deck that are more worth. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, the stadium, because I'm, I'm not trying to lose the Labyrinth. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Because while that's a childish card in itself, <laughs> it is good. You have, to, to, you, have to, you have to respect that one. You have to respect that one. Okay, cool. So, what do you think the vi what is the viability of damage spread decks? Do they have what it takes to get to day two, top eight, win the tournament? Uh, Kika, I feel like the only one that does is some kind of Malamar variant, <clears throat> just because it has more tools to succeed. Mm -hmm. Like you can just play more strategies that differentiate from damage spread. Even though damage spread can be good in some matchups, it's worse in a lot of other matchups in this format. Like I damage spread's that. not good versus like Pikachu Zekrom. You're mm -hmm. you're not getting to two forty two times. Yep. Spreading twenty is like that's not happening. You're gonna lose. Yeah, I agree with that. Um I have a list that I've really been liking on the channel. Um I'm playing two metal energy, Verdian Forest, and an Ultra Necrozma, but it's a spread based deck. Uh since you're playing the four DCE for Shining Arceus and Tapu Koko, I have an Onyx in there as well. Um, so you have Ultra Necrozma to take out big threats, like the, that random stuff that we talked about you see in the first three rounds of regionals. Um, I took it to a League Challenge, and I played against a Stack Attack of Dusk Main Magnezone deck round two. <laughs> and because <laughs> and if I was playing just Tapu Kokos, I would have lost and not, you know, not been able to win the League Challenge because of that. But I had Ultra Necrozma GX, so I could just power up three Psychic Energy, take my time, Guzma their threat, kill it, and just chain that. Um, so I think Malamar spread has a really great thing about it where you can deal with big threats in one turn, whereas some other spread decks, you don't have that ability. Yeah, just having the Onyx ability. like The Onyx is good, too. Option yeah. is good. Uh, Russell, does damage spread have viability? You can make day two, and then you can lose to all the good players because they they're not dumb and overbench their um, Pokemon and then smack you in the mouth because they're better. And then you're stuck there with damage spread got it alec go spread your 20 bro <laughs> yeah same thing as russ just you're gonna get you to, to day two and then they're not gonna overbench and they're just gonna sit there with like a zoark or something or like two zoarks on the board and they're just constant chain ace to roll or something like that cool cool just no just don't overbench um so same question different deck what is the viability of either control or stall <laughs> decks you can talk about either or both um just to get everyone on the same page, a control deck is more like con Zora control, where you're doing a lot of actions that are manipulating both your board, like healing, and your opponent's board, like Enhanced Hammer, Faba, things like that. Whereas Stall, or what some people call Mill, is just sitting a Whale Lord, Magic Harp GX, and healing it every turn. Um, Alec, what do you think of the viability of that is? Um, control one senior, so it's. God, I, I mean, it's seniors, yes. but it might have something. I don't know. I think control could be really good. I think some whack controlist could do decent. I don't know how well it would do day two, just depending on, like, what some... I don't know what people are going to whip out, like, some crazy crap. Plus, I don't know. Russ is teching a ranger, so I'll just do that. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, 
if they play to beat control, I mean, just run into it. But take I think L. it could be all right. Yeah, just take the L if they play, if they play for it. If not, I mean, is a Venusaur? I, I think a good Venusaur list could potentially do well this tournament, depending on the amount of Pico. Yeah, I, I think Venusaur could make a deep run, take the wins on Zapdos variants and Zoro Rock. Uh, Peter, how about you? Viability of control or stall decks? Um, I hate them. Uh, I would never be caught dead playing one of those. Um, I think Zoro control is probably the best one out of the whole bunch, just because it can most effectively use a Rangaroo loop with the Wonder Labyrinth and just draw a bunch of cards. I feel like they have a late game strategy with the unknown hand if they play that type of variant and like if everyone plays these like weak like eight ten energy decks that can just attach once per turn i feel like they have really good matchups uh russ Mm, i think none of them are like all that phenomenal um plume's okay i don't think I don't think any of these like win tournaments except for like Zoro Control when it was a huge surprise. I think you beat bad players that aren't prepared for it. You also beat top players that are lazy and don't feel like testing nor preparing themselves for it. And I just don't enjoy that kind of tournament. It's just so boring. I don't want to do that. Like like I was bored enough like playing Zoro Pod and that like deck swings like crazy and mm-hmm. stuff. But like like I'm not trying to sit there and just remove energy and. I don't, I don't think you actually interact with your opponent. I think it's, like, very childish that you just sit there and, like, oh, you've got energy on board and remove it and then carry on my way. Like, it's not – it's really bad. So, the game already has very little interaction as all, as is, but now you're just going to take it to a whole new level of – if, like, is that energy on board? Cool, remove it. All right, go ahead. Thanks. So is stall making day two? Yeah. Okay. One cool. or two. Yep. Mm-hmm. At least one or two. I feel like they also got a new tool, if you want to mention that. They got the new Lycanroc GX. Mm-hmm. If they play Isorola with Rainbow Energies in their list, they can just recycle that as a Flare Grunt. In Zoro Control, right? Yeah. Because the seniors mm-hmm. list played that. Did he? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, we're going to move over to community questions, try to wrap these up pretty quick. Um, I posted in Hey Fonte, asked if anyone had questions for the guests on the channel today. Um, Skylar asks... Any thoughts on Gengar Mimic you in any Malamar variant, uh, Russell? Any thoughts on what Mimic you Gengar variant? Gengar Mimic you GX in an Ultra Necrozma or Psychic Malamar deck. Mm, Psychic Malamar, it's not bad. A lot of people told me otherwise. I personally tested like two games with it, and it didn't do anything. <laughs> Kika, so, good or I bad? My card is god awful. Great. Don't play it. Agreed. Um. What is the play for points, and what is the play for winning? Uh, Alec. Ooh. Uh, points, Zoroark, winning. Uh, Pikaron, if you build a gas list, it never breaks. Uh, Russell. Mm, both are Zapdos. Uh, Zapdos for points and Zapdos for winning? Yeah. Cool. Why not? Um, you don't think you're going to see enough luck? Mm, I think my list wouldn't just scoop the muck. So build your list not to scoop the muck. That's very good advice. Yeah. Um, Peter, will Plume C play? Like how much play? Um, will you <laughs> see it in day one? Will you play against it one round? Will I play against it? No, but Russell might. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll kiss my Jolteon. Like... <laughs> Um, okay, so Andre says he notices a lot of people playing Pika Ram and Zapdos, but what about focusing on Jap- on uh, Jolteon GX? Is there is there any viability in focusing on Jolteon GX, or is it always a secondary attacker? Uh, Russell? It's always a secondary attacker. Like, what we try to do, they're over here swinging and knocking out, like, Pika Ram, mm-hmm. and, like, they're, they're already bringing fighting in, like, some other form. The Jolteon's just there to answer, like, for the mirror of Zapdos mirror. And um, he's a useful card. He ain't that good. Okay, is you? It is useful as secondary, though. You'd say. Absolutely, GX attack is stylish. Cool, cool, cool. Especially against good players when they don't overbench and walk into a Coco GX. But okay. I don't expect my opponents to be good. This person had a few questions. Uh, is Buzzrock Tails a solid play, Alec? No. No. Good. 
I hate that deck so much. If, anyone, if your play is like, like, you know, wanting to wrap the tournament up quickly, you know, maybe go get some to eat, get, go catch some, like, clam pearl on that day or something. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> that's, that's the play, dude. Um, is there yeah, a no, pod? Ask, what was it? No, what was it, Alec? Go ahead. I, I, was, I was just going to say, I asked Ty and Ryan Antonucci who did well at the event, and they said this deck sucks. Yeah, so we no. all played the deck, and it was terrible. Um... Can Acerola and Golisopod GX be good because of Shrine and small attackers? Uh, Peter? No. no. Would you say no because Golisopod itself isn't putting out enough damage while healing? Uh, I just don't like Golisopod. Okay. Russell, you like Golisopod. It's not It's not enough. You can't beat Pico Rome. Cool. Yeah. Um, and does Zoro Desi Tails have a place in this meta? Uh, Kika. You can't beat Zekrom. Even with Evil Tall GX and Larvitar? No chance. Cool. Um, is the meta going to be more risky decks like uh, Stall Control and Celebi Venusaur trying to take free wins? What is that ever going to be the meta? <laughs> We're not even, don't even finish the question. It's next. No. Okay. <laughs> is the meta, meta going to be Stall? <laughs> That's a no. Uh, Dude, sorry, even Nicholas. when even when DDG was running expanded regionals, like it literally all, <laughs> all of them show up with the same list, only they make day two with it. With do you like, guys want to? Do you guys want to hear a funny statistic about that? Yeah. While while DDG was winning all those expanded regionals with Zora Control throughout all three of those regionals, um, including the one that Dean just won, I played a total of zero Zora, Zora Control at all three of them. Nice. The only yeah. the, the only Zora Control I played against was DDG. And I sauced them like children, boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're going a little long, so I'll have a few more community questions and then we'll wrap it up. Um, are there any uh, low-tier or rogue decks that have good matchups versus Jirachi, Zapdos that can make a splash? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll bring it. Empoleon Metal version, you smack that deck up. Uh, cool. Swampert Quagsire, you smack them up. Like, <laughs> what He's else a rogue. Got? Like, like this. This and is anything what you asked that, for, Alex. <laughs> if it's unaffected by Shrine and can knock out Zapdos in one shot and doesn't get one shot back, it's great. Yo, Raikou, Raikou, like a uh, Lost Blender yeah. with a Naga deck, <laughs> yo, slaughter, slaughter Zapdos. Do you beat anything else? No. But like, you beat Zapdos, though. You know what slaughters Zapdos? What? Incineroar GX Guzzlord. Yes, dude, that thing destroys it. <laughs> Okay. Yo, um, you, you not know any of the boy? <laughs> <laughs> Alec, uh, Joe over from Omnipoke asks, uh, which cards are the best to add into Pika Ram in, uh, to adjust to the format shift? Policies, Raikou, uh, Acerola, Max Potts, or Jolteon GX? Out of those five? Well, no, those are just some examples. Oh, okay. Um, if I'm trying to win the event with Pika Ram and round out my matchups for everything, I'm playing a 1-1 Jolteon, I think. Uh, I'd probably play an Acerola, just because I don't want to lose to, like, something that, I don't know, I just want to play an Acerola. That card seems pretty good. Um, Raikou sucks, I hate it. Uh, Jolteon, Jolteon, uh, Acerola, uh, I don't know anything else that is unusual. Maybe, uh, I'll keep Absol. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last question from the community. Um, where do Malamar variants stand after OCIC? They were a little underwhelming there. Um, Psychic Malamar, Ultra Necrozma, are they still good? Uh, Peter? Well, they can't deal with Zapdos, so... Unless you got some spicy hot techs for your Malamar builds, which, uh, some people might, you're not beating them. Sounds like it's you, boy. <laughs> no, Peter's not playing about. Malamar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Um, so we're going to wrap things up. Uh, shout outs, and before you shout out, name three decks that you think will be in top eight. Uh, be specific to the variant if you can. And uh, shout out, you know, your testing partners, your team sponsors, what have you. Uh, Alec. Uh, top eight, Picaron, Zapdos Jirachi, one Zorak, because it always does. Uh, and then shout outs, uh, shout out to Arlo Neal, JK Wirt, Eli, and those guys are my homies, just to hang out and just have fun with uh, and shout out to team energy nerd ridge gaming out of chicago uh, i just got signed before dallas and i did him proud first regional hope to do it another one cool peter 
Um, you said three decks, right? Yep. So I expect a Zapdos, a Zorark, um, and a Pikachu Zekrom. The and three you know what? You know what's going to get ninth? A Sceptile deck. Let's go, <laughs> boys. <laughs> and uh, shout outs, Peter. Anything? Uh, shout outs to you for having me on your channel, and shout outs to all the Bulus out there. <laughs> and uh, Russ. Um, dude, it's it's like so easy to say the same three. Just Zapdos without Shrine, Zapdos with Shrine, and then Pico Rom. They're gonna lose in top four though. That's a that's fate. Cool. They, they <laughs> can't cool. they can't make it past that. Um, and then shout outs to my team, someone's PC, um, all the homies out there who believe in themselves and in me. Um, shout out to Try Hard Rust 2019. It's really entertaining. <laughs> um, being like this stupid, and uh, I don't know. Shout out to Hey Fonte. You guys are really entertaining. Um, I like yeah. everyone asking for list requests and me just deleting and kicking them for no reason. Feels really great. <laughs> um, our policy is to screenshot it and then post it in the group and then delete it. I haven't been doing that. I'm getting lazy. I'm just kicking it. And then people are like, hey, why my stuff get deleted? And I, I got to be honest, I don't remember why, but I'm pretty sure I did it. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. All right. Well, thank you guys for being on the channel. As always, check out flipsidegaming.com and use code CELIO or code or someone's PC. PC. <laughs> Save PC, uh, save mine. PC, or code save PC uh, for ten percent off of your next order, ten dollars or more. Uh, click the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video, and check out some more videos to the right. I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network. <laughs>